ですね。So, nobody is in with me yet. Uh, I'll just wait for people to come in here. Hello, everybody. I don't know if anybody's in there. It's my first time doing a live. I don't know how to work this thing.、Uh, it says I have one person. I don't know who it is. It just says I have one person. So you are anonymous. If you have any questions about long COVID and how to heal, please.、Uh, Next one.、Uh, I want to do. I wanted to add, answer questions for anybody out there. I feel like I'm putting up videos, but I feel like so many different specific questions. And that's my dog, so I apologize. She's down there. Doesn't stop barking. Hey, Stuart, my man. How you doing, brother? Sweet, sweet MS one. How you doing? I appreciate you passing by. Thank you so much. Thanks for saying hi. Again, any questions you guys have about long COVID? That's why I made the live. I don't want to like get into a whole talking. Zeus, my man, what's up? Sorry for being late. I saw you in the、uh, chat. I apologize. I was out with the family、uh, with the bike trailer, and I had to take the baby out and feed her. We had to do a whole pit stop. So I apologize. Yeah, man, Stuart. Of course, man. No problem. Any time, please. If you have any questions about long COVID, this is the time. That is my beautiful wife, the Escobar Familia. You'll see like a, she has like an Instagram. You could go follow that if you guys are interested. It's like family stuff, and you'll see like what we did today. We we're on the bike trailer, went to ride. We rode, I think, fifteen miles. Um, we had a great time. Again, any questions you have? I don't want to bore you guys, so I apologize. Any questions you have about long COVID? It doesn't have to be specific. It could be things you guys are struggling with. I know it's hard to be vulnerable, especially like when it's a live session.、Um, but you know, don't be afraid of opening up. If you have any struggles you're going through and you don't know how to, you know, part of your long COVID、uh, recovery pots, MECFS. Anything you guys have, let me know.、Uh, I actually was talking about somebody rec- somebody recently. Okay, daily routine to calm the nervous system down. Okay, so that's a good that's a good、uh, that's a, that's a good starter. All right, so the biggest thing it's it's not so as simple as I have a daily routine and it's I'm gonna succeed with long COVID recovery. And there's reasons why. If you have a personality where you're constantly stressing yourself over and over again. Then you can do all the meditation. You could do all the laughing yoga. You could do all the breathing exercises. You can do the karaoke, the singing. The you could do a lot of the calming exercises. The problem is that because you're constantly triggering yourself through your thoughts, then it becomes hard. Like you, it's like it's like opening a wound, scabbing it up, and peeling it up, peeling the scab off, and then it it heals, and you're peeling it off, and you just keep rubbing that wound over. And over and over again, and so the problem with that is that if you're peeling that over and over again, it never heals. So long COVID is the same thing. So、uh, daily routine. I'll tell you what I did, and maybe that will maybe that'll make sense for you guys.、Uh, I was very gung ho about recovery because I knew Polly Vega. Once I heard about it, it clicked. I was like, this is the only thing that makes sense. So with Polly Vega. So、I gave up on trying to improve my symptoms in a way. I was like, okay, if I do this nonstop for three months with no improvement, can I commit to it without any improvement? If anything, maybe I'll get worse. But I trust this process. I have faith in this process. Can I be patient enough to see the results in three months? And that's a struggle because you want to get, you want to heal right now. You want to go back to work. You want to have the energy. You want to ride your bike. You want to run. You want to. Go shopping again. You want to get out of the couch, so having that patience is crucial. So again, sorry, Stuart. What's the daily routine I did? So instead of focusing on my symptoms, what I did is I I went I committed to the practice. So every morning I would 
uh, in the beginning, this is what I was doing. I recommend something a little different, but this is what I was doing. And then I'll tell you what I recommend. Every morning for 20 minutes, I did yoga. Yoga is not yoga like what you guys think. I did download an app, but what ended up happening was that I kind of just did the positions I enjoyed. All the positions are on the floor, none are standing. And what it really is, it's stretching. I'm really just doing a hamstring stretch. I'm doing a quad stretch. I'm just stretching. I'm stretching my calves. But when I feel that pain of stretching, I focus on my breathing. Purse lips, deep breath, purse lips while feeling that stretch, while feeling that pain. Relaxing into it, settling into it. And then I would try to smile because there's science saying that when you smile, your body tries to release hormones to feel good, to feel happy. And that's what you want because with the polyvagal theory, with your nervous system, you're constantly stuck. That lever is stuck in chronic stress and chronic stress is cortisol release, noradrenaline. It's all these hormones that cause you to stress, stress, stress. So you combat that by, you try to, at first you won't really feel it. Smile, deep breath, smiling while you're stretching. So I did that for 20 minutes. Then I would meditate for 20 minutes. The problem with the meditation is that I would fall asleep because I obviously had chronic fatigue. So I would meditate for like five minutes and I would nap for 15 and, or I would nap longer than 15. I would wake up and I knew I saw the app was finished. So what do I recommend now? And I was doing that every morning and I was doing that every night, 40 minutes, 40 minutes committed. I committed to the practice. So what did I do? What would I recommend now? I, the yoga, I think it's great because I think there is a body mind connection and there's these, I do believe there is this stress can be held within your muscles. And when you stretch that, like when you get a massage or when you do a deep stretch, you just feel so relaxed. You know, you just feel so good. And so it's really that you're kind of uh, communicating to your body. You're, you're, you're stress-free, you're relaxed. So I would do the yoga. I would do either laughing yoga, which laughing yoga is like eight minutes, 10 minutes the most. You can make it as short as you want. And I would do absolutely recommend everybody to do the, the breathing exercises. I see a few comments, but I just wanted to answer fully Stuart's question. So I would just do the, I would do personally what I would do if I had to do it all over. I would do breathing exercise for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever you have time for. If you have 20 hours a day, you're doing nothing. Then I would do 20 hours a day. I really wouldn't. But you know what I mean? Like if you have a lot of time, I had a lot of time. So I just committed to it. And you know, honestly, I was probably doing it three times a day. But I wasn't stressing myself. I got to do it. I did it because I knew I had nothing to do. And uh, I really wanted to heal. Like, I really, I was like, I think this is it. Like, I really, and within three days, I think on the third day, brain fog left. It was over for long COVID. I knew this was working. And I committed. And I think that's why my recovery was pretty quick. Uh, so, yeah, that's what I would do. Daily routine. There's it. If you have a job and, you know, I wasn't working back then. So if you have a job that's stressful and stuff, there's there's strategies you can do a, around your job and around stressful life things to recover. But I'm going to go to another. My, you guys can ask, continue asking more questions. I'm new to this, so I apologize. Appreciate the patience. Hey, Rob, been following your recovery recipe. Brain fog seems to be working. The muscle fatigue is my battle. Yeah, the muscle fatigue is ridiculous. What was your the timeline for muscle fatigue recovery? Okay, so the biggest thing for me was the brain fog. Brain fog really started leaving within three days. I, I brain fog left for like it left for like three minutes. Like it, it was so short. Sorry, my camera's having a little focusing problem. Okay, there we go. So, but the muscle fatigue. Everyone's journey is a little different. Everyone's symptoms different. So for example, Zeus, so for you, let's say that uh, muscle fatigue is really aggravating you. It's really one of those symptoms that stick there. For me, it could be brain fog that sticks there. So even don't ever compare symptom to symptom. So the way I would really label is that muscle fatigue for you is one of those uh, lingering symptoms. They really take a hard time leaving. I wouldn't focus so much on when they will leave. Cause I know as you're saying the timeline, I wouldn't focus on timeline. I would focus on how much time do you spend 
on doing these polyvagal exercises. That would be, if you could do 10 minutes a day, I would up it, 20 minutes a day. Can you do it 20 minutes a day? Can you be strategic? Do you go to work? What's What are the events in your life, in your daily life routine that stress you out? If it's work, can you do polyvagal before going to work to calm your nervous system down? When you get to work, can you do a quick five-minute breathing exercise? Maybe during your lunch break. Can you go to the car? Can you go to the bathroom and do, I wouldn't do laughing yoga, but I would do a breathing exercise. Can you leave work? Get home right away, do breathing exercise. Like that's what, that's the commitment it takes. A lot of people think that you can just be relaxed and watch TV and chill out to heal. And no, like really when I'm thinking about it and I'm helping some of the people through Instagram and I reach out, I've been getting on calls, FaceTime and all that. And a lot of people tell me I'm relaxed. You know, I'm joyful. Yeah, I mean, it's important for you to be joyful. But if you're like watching TV joyfully, smiling, nothing's going to happen. The thing is that we're so afraid of our symptoms. Like we're genuinely so scared of triggering our symptoms. We don't want to do anything. We're just like, no, no, I just want to, I I don't want to go jog because when I go jog, my symptoms get triggered. So I'm just going to stay here. No, you want to attack your symptoms. So if you know... So at first, this everyone's in a different stage. So if at first you're really severe, I wouldn't worry about exercising. I wouldn't worry about taking a walk. I would worry about doing the polyvagal exercises. Can you do that to calm your nervous system? Once you, you'll start noticing you'll gain some space. You'll be able to walk around the house. You'll be able to go grocery shopping. You'll be able to go for a drive. Then if you're noticing you have a little bit of wiggle room, you're like, I'm feeling a little better. And you notice that every time you go to the mall, you get really stressed out and your symptoms come back. Great. Now that you know that, I would purposely, and I kind of did that with the exercise, I would purposely go to the mall. I would drive. I would do a breathing exercise, laughing yoga, whatever works for me, whatever works for you. Relax myself. I'm not in danger. I'm safe. Smile. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I'm safe. I feel so good. I feel so good. I'm safe. I would go to the mall. I would listen to Disney music in the mall because there's like science connected to Disney music being able to calm your nervous system because of the voice, people's voice with the melody in the background. I would listen to Disney music while I'm there. And if I if I feel any symptoms, again, let's say that you're symptom-free, you get a symptoms. I would sit down in the mall and I would do breathing again. I'm safe. I'm safe. I feel so good. Smile. Breathe. So this is what I was doing to return to the gym. And I don't know if anybody was looking at me. Pretty sure people were. But I would just smile and deep breathing. And then I would do very little. And then I would go to the mall, one store, then come back and go home. And get home, do the laughing yoga. Do the ground yoga and calm your nervous system. Don't be afraid of the things that trigger you. I hope that makes sense. You want to kind of attack those things. But you want to start with the most bottom thing. So the thing that triggers you right away. Start with that. And slowly, you'll be able to have a normal life like I did. I had a normal life after three months. After three months, I no longer had uh, post-adjustral malaise. I didn't have brain fog. I didn't have POTS symptoms. Yes, I measured my heart rate and all that. Everyone keeps asking me about that. Yes, I made sure I was like POTS-free. I had a normal full-time job. So to me, I was good. I couldn't run. And I didn't try running. I didn't try cycling. I didn't try pushing my body in that sense. Because for me, it was like, I just want to go back to work. I just want to support my family financially. Uh, and I was good at, with that. And once I got there, then I got a little what I, I joke around, but I say I get a little greedy because, right, you want to run again, exercise again. You want to do more. And so that's how I tackled that by sandwiching in these polyvagal exercises around the things that triggered them. Okay. Sorry, Zeus. I hope that answers. Keep shooting any questions you have. I'll do my best. I know I'm a little late. So sorry. Sweets MS1. Got COVID in January this year and haven't been the same. Extreme fatigue and lots of symptoms. I'm sorry about that. Did you experience blurry vision, pressure in the head and chest after staying a few minutes? Absolutely. The blurry vision was so annoying because I got home from the hospital and my blurry vision never went away. And supposedly I was like, you know, COVID free. So I just didn't understand. I uh, Sorry, I know the camera. I don't know why this camera is having. There we go. Oh, maybe it's my... There we go. Maybe that's it. So yeah, so it could have been, um, 
it was just frustrating, the blurry vision. So I'm a, I'll tell you guys the symptoms I sort of had. I had POTS, severe POTS symptoms. I hated the POTS symptoms because you get nauseous and dizzy upon standing for no reason. And I had the shakes. And, you know, it's called um, people with, uh, there's a sort of POTS. Uh, it's called, uh, man, I got, guys, I don't even remember. There's a POTS that they say it's from caused by the adrenals being overworked. And it's releasing norepinephrine, and it's which is adrenaline, and so it causes the shaking. So it was annoying. Like you understand, I'm 32 years old. Why am I? Why do I have these Parkinsonian symptoms? When I would go to bed, I would pee, clear urine. I would purposely dehydrate myself during the day. Wouldn't drink anything. Go to sleep. I would lie down. I would start peeing five, six times a night. I. It was the most annoying. I had severe PTSD. I had extreme brain fog. I mean, I, I, so I know it's so, I just hate talking about my symptoms because it's like, I really got to go back. I don't know how miserable, uh, I was so miserable. I couldn't walk. Can you imagine? Like I, I did an Ironman, right? I used to do Ironmans, half Ironmans, marathons. And I was this 32 year old guy. Couldn't do anything. Like, you know, dignity as a man. I'm the breadwinner of my family. I lost all that. And that's hard. That's why I understand a lot of you guys. Even me, I get emotional talking about it. So yeah, the symptoms were so bad, I couldn't support my family. And I'm one of those guys, I think a lot of us are type A personality. We're some of these guys that we're like, we're going to push it. We're going to keep fighting for it. Like we're going we're gonna to go to work. We're going to force ourselves more. And funny enough, that works short term, but it doesn't work long term. It's not healthy for your nervous system or for yourself. So yeah, I'll keep reading. It says... Uh, these specific symptoms started for me about two weeks ago. I feel faint and start seeing spots kind of like I'm not getting enough oxygen. Oh yeah. The, the spots. I used to tell my wife, I'm like, Oh my God, babe, I'm seeing spots. I'm seeing spots. Sounds like you're potsy. Like you have pot symptoms. Um, pots. It's more than the ME CFS symptoms. Had a CFS before I got COVID. But long COVID made symptoms way worse. Yeah. I'm going to be honest with you guys. When I look back, I went to, I'm a nurse. So I went to nursing school before nursing school, I was extremely stressed out and I probably had a chronic fatigue for like three months until this day. I just thought I was burned out, but I remember like I, I was so fatigued and I did recover. It took like six months to recover. And I never knew that I probably suffered from that because I pushed my body so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much, so much. And so I'm sorry that you have CFS. Just know that they're both the same thing. That's the beauty of this. You can have chronic fatigue syndrome, ME, you can have long COVID, POTS. These are fibromyalgia. I had something, uh, nerve, small nerve, something. It's like pain in the extremities. It's, it feels like electricity is running through them. That was that was really bad. I remember just crying. And my wife was just there doing hopeless. Not Nobody could do anything. And uh, nothing helped. Hot water, cold water, nothing. And yeah, but just know that they're, they, the cure to all this you know, I don't like to say that, but the cure to all this is really just, now you know the problem is. The problem, sweets, MS, one, is your nervous system is chronically stressed. Chronically stressed. That lever isn't stuck in stress. And you need to pull it back into relax, calm down, safe. And that takes time. That takes dedication, commitment. Uh, if you just wait and you're just patient, it won't it won't just heal itself. My beautiful wife is supporting me. Rob's daily routine. Yep, that's what that's that's my wife. Uh, that's about what I did. I I did do three, five times, four times a day some days. But one important thing about trying to stick to a routine, guys, is don't overstress it. But you gotta kind of force yourself because when that fatigue kicks in, I didn't want to do any of this. You just want to die. Like I literally just want to lay down and. I don't want to think about nothing, right? You just want to knock out, think about nothing. And so it really has, you really need to be, have this commitment of like, I'm going to try my best. And if you don't do it, it's okay. Don't stress yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Do it tomorrow. That's it. Do it tonight. Just do your best every day. Don't stress yourself. Don't shame yourself. Don't do any of that. Um, you also focus on smiling. Yeah, I, I try. I would smile 24-7 in the car. 
I feel so good. I feel so good. I feel so good. Oh my God. I live such a good life. 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 Because the thoughts I kept repeating to myself were, I will never heal. I will never heal. I will never heal. I will never hear. And what I was feeling was despair, 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 hopelessness, 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 hopelessness. And so you got to change that narrative by forcing positive thoughts. Uh, Max, what's up, Max? Appreciate the comment, brother. Uh, most of my long COVID issues are better, but my eye problem is still bothering me. I lost focusing of, of eyes sometimes along with eye strain issues. Any suggestion? So uh, just make sure your eye is good. Like if your eyeball is good, you get a test and the doctor say you're good. And, and maybe you know it's a long COVID symptom. It means something is stressing you out. Something. But what I recommend, do breathing exercises, laughing yoga. Find an exercise that works for you, Max, for you. It can be triggering. It has to be something that really makes you feel calm at the end of that session. It should make you feel, wow, I feel good. That was good. I feel good. I feel calm. And you want to make sure, Max, you're doing that around things that stress you out throughout your life. So don't just do it in the morning and night if you have a stressful job. I would do it within your job. I would change jobs. I would change careers. And that's hard because usually you got to, you know, if you're functional, why would you quit your job? Especially if, you know, you're supporting your family. I get it. Um, but I hope, guys, there's, there, there's so much more to this. I'm kind of just scratching the surface because it goes too deep. And so, Max, I would focus on things on everyday life stressors, but I will look into childhood trauma. I will look on your personality. Are you type A? Are you a perfectionist? Are you a people pleaser? Uh, those are things I will look at. Are you Are you driven? Push, 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 push. I would work on that. On those personally. I know, I wish I could just do it now, but it'd be like a two hour session and trying to teach you to work on that. But uh, yeah, I would, I love that you mentioned, I'm currently reading The Body Keep the Score by, great book. Yes, 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 yes. Any trauma you have, guys, childhood trauma is huge component of this, huge. The way you know you have childhood trauma, look at your personality. If you're if you're if you're type A and all this, if the reason you're like that is because you have certain beliefs that reinforce that behavior, and then you look at those beliefs and you're like, "Where the hell did I get these beliefs?" And it's from childhood trauma. And you know you got to dig, 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 and it's you know a lot of self reflection. Zeus got it. Thank you very much. Did you rehearse the thirteen things mentioning strong people don't do as a daily basis? All right, Zeus. So what I did. I have a Notion. Uh, I have Evernote now, but I use Notion, which is like a writing app. Um, it's free. Notion is free. And I would have a daily journal. And I would I would have a gratitude journal. Every day just reminding me of gratitude. Let me tell you, gratitude journal won't cure you. All right. Gratitude journal is a good mentor exercise. It's not going to cure you. Uh, so Because I hear people that are like sort of recovering on Instagram, YouTube, and all this saying that, you know, gratitude journal is part of their healing. Gratitude journal is great. It's like therapy. It's amazing. It won't heal you. Just wanna, I just want to make that very clear. The healing will be with journal, journaling about childhood trauma, journaling about it, removing stressors from your life. It's there's it's not gratitude. But I had a gratitude journal, sorry, Zeus, and I had the points that affected me on the top. So it was like a it's a thing that pops up every time I click it, and I would I would read it. I wouldn't read it every day, but I would I would look at it. And so I would remind myself, don't be a victim. You're not a victim. And I, will, I there's a few points from that book that I like. So obviously you've been watching my videos, Zeus. So I appreciate that. So there are certain points. There's like five or six points I really like from that book. And I had it on the top written down. If you could read it every day. So for example, uh, this is like um, this every Wednesday. I have like a, I know it's mirrored. So you won't be able to see it. But I write like the things I'm focused for the week. So if you could write something like any of those, you know, take top three or four from her book, Third Telling Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. If you could take three of those things, points, and write them down and just have it in front of you, you read it every day. And that's what I would do. Also, journaling, I remember positive thoughts. I don't know if this works, but I did it. I just kept writing over and over again a positive thought I wanted to think. So I would write um, part of uh, therapy, they make you write the negative thought you're thinking. So I just thought about, I just wrote like, I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing. And I just wrote it, I'm healing, healing, I'm healing, I'm healing. Say it out loud. I'm healing, I'm healing. It's a practice. I'm healing, I'm healing, I'm healing. And you're trying to like, re, you're trying to retrain your brain. 
That's what you pretty much, because naturally the default is you're thinking this negative pathway. You want to get away from those thoughts. Um, I think we underestimate how strong our thoughts are. Not like a woo-woo way, but just uh, not like, oh, you know, I don't, you know, manifestation. Think about money. You're going to be rich. No, not, not that. I mean, like, if you think about stressful stuff, your nervous system goes into stress, right? So then you don't feel good. And then that reinforces it. It's like vicious circle. I don't feel good. So I have negative thoughts, negative thoughts. Don't feel good. Don't feel good. Negative thoughts. And it just reinforces this loop. So you want to get out of that neural pathway. Positive thoughts, positive thoughts, positive thoughts. Which breathing exercise did you do? There are so many. Ali, my man. Okay, Ali, you want to do something that calms you down. Do not do the Wim Hof. I love Wim Hof. I did cold plunges. Cold plunges was miraculous for my PTSD. And it was great for my long COVID pot symptoms. After five hours, six hours, my symptoms came back after cold plunge. So I would do it every morning. Uh, and it's good for five, six hours. Then you get my symptoms came full blast. So breathing exercise. Do not do anything fast. You want slow, deep, and slow. So I would breathe in, five seconds, hold, eight, breathe out. Ten seconds. That's what I was doing. There is no magical cure. There's no formula. There's no number. If you do six, nine, eleven, it's not like you won't get cured. The most important things about breathing is that when you do breathing exercises is that you feel good. You should not feel like you're holding your breath. So at first I had lung issues for a long time and I was on steroids and all these other things. And so if you're having, um, if at first you can't do the breath hold, don't do the breath hold. Just breathe in nice and slow. Breathe out. Relax your shoulders, relax your neck, relax your arms. Maybe doing this laying down is best. And do it again. Nice and slow. And breathe out. And while breathing out, relax your body. And then focus also on smiling, smiling. So I would try doing the 5, 8, 10. Uh, and mess with it. At first, I couldn't do a, too much of a breath hold, so I, I think I did it less. Mess with it. See what feels good for you. For me, eventually, it was like five in, 10 hold, 14 exhale. But just because you go, this isn't the Olympics. Just because I go longer doesn't mean it's better. No, just you want to go nice, deep, long breath. Deep, long breath while making sure your body's relaxing, your muscles are not like this. You want to breathe like this. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel that tension. Relax, release, release, smile, smile, release. So yeah, those are the breathing exercises I recommend. Nice and slow. That's your way of communicating to your nervous system. I am safe. Sweet MS. Not sure if you dealt with medical gaslighting, but if so, how do you deal with it? And how did you deal with the feeling like no one else understands an unsolicited, unhelpful advice from family? Man, sweet. Sweets, MS. That's hard, man. Let me tell you, man, that's family gaslighting you and shaming you. That's hard. So I really kept the circle tight. So at that point, and you know, my wife really did a good job protecting me. So my wife made sure to, that any anybody who was very stressful, like my parents or certain people, her side of the family. And maybe they were like, you know, her brothers would, my, my brothers-in-law were, I love them to death, but they would be like, uh, you know, oh, you don't want to go to work. You know, they're tough guys. First of all, they're like tough guys, all right, legit. And you know, they're construction workers. They're like, oh, this guy just doesn't want to go to work. And so staying away, distancing yourself is number one. If you can't distance yourself from family members that are gaslighting you, well, let's say it's like your spouse. I would have a conversation with them. You know, especially if it's someone like a spouse because they're with you all the time. And the other thing is that you need to not care. The problem with people like us that we're such people pleaser, we care too much about what other people think about us. It's amazing. And 
you really can't care. You know, you really can't. If someone says something stupid to you, don't care. And that's why I think something really important to combat this is make sure you're watching YouTubers that have healed or, you know, someone you enjoy. Preferably somebody who puts more videos out more than me. You know, sorry, guys, I could do a better job. Um, but like maybe I would ask tough Raylan, Raylan Ang, Aggles channel. I think it's Angle, but it's Aggle. Raylan Aggles channel. Such, such a hard time. I would watch her channel nonstop. I would continue building your hope. Because what happens when you talk to people that gaslight you, they tear down your hope. You build up this hope. I could get better. You know, I've seen, uh, you know, my name's Rob. So, you, you know, I've seen Rob's channel. He's gotten better. He improved. But my family keeps tearing me down. Watch people that build you up. That's what I would do. Distance as much as possible from people that gaslight you and build up your faith, right? Like, I know it sounds weird, but you need to have faith that you can heal, right? Because at first you kind of don't believe it. You're like, is this real? Is this woo-woo? You know, and there's, you know, is, are they trying to sell me a supplement? And, you know, so you want really want to have like a little faith. Man, this, these guys are, they all say they heal through meditation. They all say they heal through, you know, not being so type A anymore. Man, how do I do that? Like, and watch these people recover. Watch their recovery story nonstop. Watch it, watch it, watch it. I hope that answers. Uh, yeah, using an app called I Breathe on the App Store. I have an iPhone, so I don't know if you have an Android. Um, so Max, that really, is that for Max? Oh, that's for Ali. Ali, so that helped me. And you could, I think it was like five bucks, one-time purchase. And you could put the interval. And it'll say like, let me show you guys. All right, so. Here we go. It's it's this blue app. And so, so you could set your interval through the app, how long you want the inhale, how long you want the hold, and how long you want to exhale. So at first, you know, because the fatigue and it's really hard, I use this. I just put it by my head and I just breathe in and, you know, I just follow it. Later on, I just did it without anything. I just, I just know what felt normal. And you'll hear it in a minute. Inhale. I know that's sorry, but hold. You're, you're holding. Exhale. And you're breathing out through pursed lips. Always through pursed lips. Breathing in, doesn't matter. Nose, mouth. Just make sure it's nice and slow. Inhale. And so I would do this. And you could say how many intervals you want to do. So I would do where it was like about five, six minutes. Uh, at first, I, did, I tried to do like 10 minutes. Then I didn't need it as much, so I just went down. Um, your videos and comments helped me a lot. One of the sad things I'm observing nowadays, most long COVID patients are getting hopeless. They're getting into a cult mindset. Yeah, man, Max. So... This long COVID thing is sad, man, because look, I'm a nurse, but the problem is that the medical industry, I'm not here trying to be a conspiracy theory or anything like that. That's not what my channel is about. But sadly, the medical industry is rooted in the pharmaceutical industry and the pharmaceutical industry is all about medications. That's how they make money. It's a business. Uh, I'm not mad about it. It is what it is. I'm not here to start a revolution. But, you know, so you see these uh, these uh, clinics and the clinics I heard I heard I know people that have gone to the clinics. I'm so sorry, guys, this camera. I don't know what's going on. So I understand the clinics are decent, but they don't do they don't teach polyvagal. You know, they don't teach you. They teach you how to live a life managing your symptoms, not how to cure it. And again, it's just because the paradigm of the medical industry, it's rooted in, you know, the pharmaceutical companies and those, you know, they fund medical school and all this. Again, I'm not here to like start a revolution. It is what it is. I mean, I'm not here to fight that, but you know, that's why they're trying to find a pill. They're trying to create a cure through a pill. Yeah. That's when you go to a doctor's office, right? They don't tell you change your lifestyle, you know, lower your stress, uh, eat healthier. No, they say, here's a hypertensive medication. Here's a diabetic medication. So yeah.
again. So you kind of find your own route. Can't get mad about it. Just find your own way. And yeah, the, a lot of long COVID patients on YouTube, they're upsetting me, man. It pisses me off. They're all saying like, you know, they, you know, like they talk like, you know, like it's, it's a disease that you're like, that you have for the rest of your life. It's not me. Go to Raylan's channel. People have healed themselves from long COVID people who've had decades of chronic fatigue syndrome pots. How is it possible? Like we're not special. There's nothing genetic. If you believe that we are special, then you won't get, you won't heal from long, from long COVID. Understand that. So I just want to, there's some people, I talk to many people trying to help them and some disappear. And I could tell they never got better. And one thing about those patients, there's a current theme throughout everybody. The ones that don't heal, they doubt polyvagal. I'm not here to change your mind if polyvagal works. I'm here to maybe convince you, set up an argument, and hopefully it works. But if you truly in your heart believe that something's broken with you, that your body's just creating blood clots, that your vagus nerve is, is damaged from the vaccines, from COVID itself, the virus went in there and destroyed all your organs. If you believe that, polyvagal won't heal you because your mind is constantly bracing. You'll do meditation and your thoughts will go, stress, 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 stress. My organs damage, my vagus nerves damage. You know, you'll get a little dizzy. Let's say you do recover by doing the exercise. You get a little dizzy one day. Stress, 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 stress. Oh my God, my my organs are damaged. My, you know, I knew it, the vaccine, the this and that. And so you, you can't, you gotta, you gotta go do your research and you gotta like hit rock bottom, I guess, and really come back to polyvagal another time. Sadly, that's what it is. I'm not here to shame people that are like that. Everyone has their own journey. Some people take some three months to heal. 10 years, 20, some of them never will. I hope they all would, but that's just the reality of it. And I'm not here to stress myself about it. It is what it is. Uh, so I see here, thank you. That sounds therapeutic. Anytime, my man. Uh, that's for Ali. Max, they attack anyone who talk about recovering positive mindset. Yeah, stay away from those people. Get out of those groups. Get out of those Facebook long COVID groups. Uh, there's one that's kind of supportive. Susie, Susie Yoga Bolt, Susie, Susie Bolt. I like her group, but some of her stuff, like some of the people, they don't, they don't believe in healing. They don't know anything about polyvagal. So I wouldn't join that group. I'm thinking about making a Facebook group for us, but I'm gonna be honest with you guys, really honest. I would probably have to need to moderate it and that would take time and anything that requires time. Yeah. I just, you know, I have my baby. I'm enjoying time with my baby. I'm enjoying riding my bike again, but I absolutely want to give back. And, um, man, you should see the people I talk to that fuel themselves. It's amazing. And that's why I keep doing this. That's a big reason. Cause I got, I talk to her people. They call me back, you know, they're like, Oh my God, my symptoms are gone and this and that. And I'm just like, like, Holy cow, like congrats, you know, and it's a great thing. It's a great, and you know, I, I'm thinking about my wife wants me to interview people and I'm, I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Sorry if you've been asked this, but what were your symptoms? Arc engineer. I've been asked about this. Um, so pretty much long COVID symptoms, Parkinsonians, PTSD, something called sleep trauma where you can't really sleep. Uh, your nervous system is, it's on full blast. It's like Ferrari status uh, with PTSD. Um, I had shivers constantly shivering. My brain fog was so bad. I'm not the most good looking guy. I'm not a model. I'm not the most lean guy. I'm not the most ripped guy. Like I, one thing I like take pride in is my attitude. I tend to be very positive and I'm very friendly. I'm great with people. And I like to think, I love to think. Um, I don't, I'm not a high IQ guy, but I like to think, I love to think, I love to think about things and and so, Arc Engineer, the biggest symptom that really hurt me was the brain fog and the inability to be able to think. Couldn't think anymore. I talked to my wife. My wife had to constantly remind me through a conversation. I'm like, babe, what was I saying? And it just sounded so loony, like loony tunes. Like it sounded nuts. Like 10 seconds in, babe, what? The, I don't know what I said. I'm sorry. And she would have to remind me. So that was the biggest symptom. I would feel this vibration on my chest. I had breathing problems. I was on a nebulizer and steroids inhalers for, for a long time. Maybe, yeah, for like a year and like three months, I was on inhalers. And then that kind of went away on its own. Um, maybe because I, I don't know. I don't know why. 
Uh, but my my chest x-rays and my MRIs did come back normal, but I still had trouble breathing. Um, it's just weird how the nervous system just affects different things. Uh, I had something called small nerve neuropathy, I think it's called, where I would have this electricity feeling through my extremities, my feet and hands. My feet were killer. I would cry myself to sleep because it was just so... It wasn't this shock, like it was, it was just destructive, this ener this feeling that wouldn't go away, this weird electricity that just so like annoying. Um, I know I'm missing more symptoms. You know, at first I had trouble walking. I had pot symptom. Pot symptom is worse. Like I swear by it, it's worse. You know, like you get up and you're extremely dizzy, blurry vision. I had white spots. I had so many. So arc engineer, I had so many freaking symptoms, uh, yeah, it's rough, man. Yeah, that's why I know. Like, a lot, I know I talk to a lot of people every day on Instagram, email, and I know you guys are going through a hard time. I know, I know this isn't easy, you know. But I'm no longer have that, which is crazy. Sometimes I don't even believe it. Hey, how are you, man? Hey, five thousand Nate, what's up, brother? How you doing, man? I do about thirty-five minutes to an hour every morning. Yeah, baby. I have a midday meditation. It really helps. Yes. That's what it's about. Like, it's that commitment. Don't worry so much about your symptoms. Let go of wanting to get better. I know that sounds so crazy. The problem is that we want to get better. We want to get better. And then the opposite is true. We run away from our symptoms. We're like, oh, no, we don't want to trigger that. No, just trust the exercises. Trust the exercises. Whatever those polyvagal are, do it as much as you can. Calming your nervous system down. Calming your... Because remember, like I said, that, that flight or flight, it's like this lever and it's stuck in stress. And every time you meditate, every time you do laughing yoga, every time you do yoga, every time you do breathing exercise, you bring it back. But your your nervous system has this spring that when you stop doing the breathing, you'll probably be okay for an hour. And if you let go of the lever, it just pushes it back in stress without you doing anything. And you constantly got to bend it. You constantly got to bring it back. You constantly got to bring it back. I know that sounds so funny. And then one day that spring starts getting not so strong. And one day you'll notice that doesn't go into fight or flight. Maybe like exercise would bring it to fight or flight. And you keep doing the work. You bring that lever back. And then you just be like, oh man, my symptoms are good. And maybe work triggers it. Do the, again, do those polyvagal exercises. But there's more than just polyvagal. Maybe I'll get into that in a few. Um, <clears throat> what to do with full-time full -time symptoms? What do you mean by that, Stuart? Full-time symptoms. You mean like you always have brain fog and all that? Uh, answer that and I'll get to you in a minute. Um, what's the polyvagal? Polyvagal or uh, 5008. Polyvagal exercises are just exercises that help calm your nervous system down. Um, things that, it could be meditation and breathing, laughing, yoga. There's a huge list. You can look up polyvagal exercises. Guys, there's like weird exercises online on YouTube that do this. And if you do, you know, like it helps calm you down because it stimulates the nervous system. Stop that. Okay. There's also a machine they sell that you put it here for your nerve, for your vagus nerve, it stimulates your vagus nerves. Yes. If you stimulate your very vagus nerve, you will calm down. Unless you plan on living with the device here and having it on 24 seven for the rest of your life, I would really get used to doing these exercises and it's like you're exercising your nervous system to be calm. And one day you'll be, your nervous system won't be dysregulated anymore. And that's, you know, that's when you heal. So yeah, uh, studying polyvagal theory can also be very helpful in improving professional performance, even though we discovered in bad time, but it will be a lifetime performance. Yo, man, Max, for sure, man. I love that. Look, I hate long COVID, but I love that I had long COVID. My life is different. I'm different. I'm better. I'm stronger. Uh, I'm happier. I don't know how to explain it. In the life, in career world, it's all about pushing yourself, grinding, having anxiety. You got to get the next thing done. You got to be driven. And yeah, that will, in the short term, make you very successful. But when you're 80 years old, you probably be like, oh my God, I live such a miserable life. And so now I don't have that anxiety. I'm not like chasing money anymore. I'm okay with the amount of money I make now. But I, would I like to make more? Absolutely. And I'm trying to figure that out. But I won't make more money by stressing the crap out of myself. I love myself way too much. And that's where everybody needs to get into. You have to have that self-love. 
Uh, sweet M MS1, did you heal mainly using only poly vegan theory or are you there any other supplements? No, supplements are garbage. Stop wasting your money. Supplements are garbage. I did all, all the supplements, Nat Plus, all these neuro supplements. Spent hundreds of dollars on these supplements. I, I kept them in a drawer for even after I healed. I just forgot about them. I threw them all out. Hundreds of dollars worth of supplements. None of that crap helps. If anything, they make you worse. Anything with caffeine, anything that turns your nervous system on will make you worse. Get out of that supplement. The only thing supplement you should be taking, maybe it's like a B12, but that, that has nothing to do with polyvagal. That has to do with your health. You know, are you, are you, how's your ferritin levels, your blood work? How's your red blood cells? Like if, you know, like if you're anemic, I would look at that. Like, you know, if you, if you could take iron supplements, but like, because if you're anemic, then it could get, when you're coming out of fatigue, you could still have a little bit of fatigue. It'll be very different though. You would feel the difference. But, you know, sometimes I remember I came out of the fatigue and I tried exercising and I just felt so fatigued. You know, it's because I, I was anemic. But you just give some iron pills, that goes away. No big deal. But I, my symptoms were all gone. I was just tired of working out. Like, so I just want to clarify that. Uh, I did polyvagal, all polyvagal. But polyvagal, there's I, more than polyvagal. There's more than polyvagal. But that's the main core of it. What supplements did it work for you? Nothing for nothing to heal long COVID. Only thing I take now is a B12, and that's because you know I'm vegan. First of all, I believe everybody should be taking B12, but even if you eat meat, but I'm vegan, so I've been vegan for 10, 11 years. Uh, so yeah. You and by the way, diet to me, I don't believe diet will affect your long COVID. If you try to fast, or if you will try to change your diet extremely, you will get worse symptoms. I've done it, and it. Because when you fast, you, for at first, you release cortisol. Your body, your mind is like, I need food. I need food. I need food. I need food. And they stress hormones kick in. And those stress hormones cause all these polyvagal problems, all these nervous system problems. So if you fast and try to get healthy, so I actually ate more garbage. When I started healing, I gained a lot of weight. I ate more garbage purposely because I was like, I'm not going to stress about food. I'm going to eat whatever the hell I want. And I did. And so I know that sounds very odd. And I know the gut microbiome is connected to the different foods that we, 100%, I agree with that, 100%. Won't cure your long COVID, but I, it'll affect your mental health. Won't affect your long COVID. I eat Oreos, healing. So these people that mention, you know, whatever diet you are happy on, do that. If you want to be on a vegan diet, great. If you want to be on a carnivore diet, great. Like, I'm not here to judge you for your diet. Do whatever you want. We're, me and you are still human brothers and sisters. We're cool. I still have a little bit. I'm not a model. I'm not a model either by 5,008. Yeah, man, you get what you get, man. No, no. Uh, <laughs> my brother is like handsome, man. My brother, you have an older brother. He's like a model, man. Handsome guy. You know, I just, I'm happy with I am. You know, I get what I get. You know, I have a beautiful wife. I have a beautiful daughter. I have a great life, man. Sorry to hear that you have suffered through those symptoms. I'm having very similar symptoms. Where did the breathing issue resolve? When did the breathing? So, guys, uh, when did the breathing issue resolve? Oh, when? Okay. Um, the breathing on, the breathing once went away on its own. I don't know why. Before I even knew about polyvagal. Yeah. So that was weird. I don't know if my nervous system was just. You know what's funny enough? Now that I'm thinking about it, the breathing I just the breathing problem went away when I when my PTSD started resolving. Because that's when I was doing EMDR around the year and three month mark. And funny enough, that's when my breathing issues resolved. And that's when my, that's when I did co plunge. And that's when my, uh, my, uh, yeah, that's when my issue, yeah. So, yeah. So I resolved before I even did polyvagal. I'm not sure if that helps. Uh, that's probably the worst thing for me. I get it, man. I was on a nebula. I was like drinking Kool-Aid. It looked like I was drinking Kool-Aid out of that nebulizer machine. I had three different uh, steroidal pumps. I had albuterol. I had a uh, thing, Spiriva, and I had another one, a green one. The breathing is no joke. I hated it. But if you do the polyvagal exercise, you commit to it, and you don't stress about your symptoms, you can heal. Take time. You can heal. Thanks for this. Chink check fool. Chin check fool. What's up, man? Thanks, Liz. Yeah, appreciate it, man. You're welcome, man. 5,008. I still have a little bit of a pot symptom, but they're not all bad like they used. I'm used to. I'm walking like three miles a day now. Great. 
And remember, don't do things that at first, like it sounds like you're walking. So that's really good. And if there's anything that triggers you, let's say that walking four miles trigger you a little bit, tackle that. Don't be scared of that, Nate. If that triggers you before walking, do your breathing exercise. Don't listen to rock music. Don't listen to anything triggering on the walk. Listen to Disney music. There's a science behind the Disney music of, of somebody singing with the melody in the background. And then afterwards, get home. Do your breathing exercise. Calm yourself down. Think happy thoughts. Happy, happy, happy. Smile, smile, smile. Breathing, breathing. And the symptoms will start leaving. And then you'll do it again. And then you'll put, you'll do four miles. You do five miles. You're like, that's something that you want to do. If you're cool with three, keep doing that. Hope that makes sense. Max, can you suggest some good books which can help you in developing good understanding of polyvagal and its own effect? All right. So I did read a little bit of the polyvagal book. It was so complicated, that book. I think I read more. So number one book I recommend everybody. Number one book. There's a book by Shannon Kayser. I don't know if I'm saying her name, but right. It's called The Self-Love Experiment. Learn to love yourself. I cannot explain that. Learn to love yourself. And there's a book by Amy Morin, 13 Things Mentally Strong People Do. Read those books. Those two books. You got to learn about self-love because this is all rooted in the lack of self-love. And there's a way to follow that, but yeah, I don't want to get into that now. Two books. I know it's not polyvagal because polyvagal, don't complicate it. Polyvagal, look polyvagal, look up the picture of the ladder of the uh, safe uh, social engagement, the fight or flight, and then this, uh, you know, depression one where it's like, uh, I think it's called something a parent sympathetic, but it's like where you get that chronic fatigue. You understand it. If you really want to dig into it, Stephen Porges, P-H, Stephen, not V, he has a book about it. It's boring. You can read it, download it, buy it. It was boring, but maybe you're more of a reader than I am. I'm not that much a reader. I'm just a curious guy. So if there's something I'm curious about, I'll read about it. But I'm not like this guy who loves reading. So, but if you are, uh, yeah, audio book. But once I understood the concept, I locked in. Uh, yeah, I feel like trash 24-7, fatigue, brain fog, flares up, panic. Oh, okay. If you're having the panic attack, that's really bad. That's really, because you're really triggered. You need to deal with the anxiety first. Oh, this is not easy, man. The dealing with the anxiety is not easy. I really wish. Why are you stressing? That's the question I actually. What are you stressed about? So, Stuart, you don't have to answer this. What are you stressed about? What are you worried about? People that have panic attacks have this constant a barrage of negative thoughts. And they're usually overstressing about things. I'm not here to shame you. Don't feel bad about being stressed out. Just understand yourself why. Understand why. Why are you stressing yourself out? Is it for financial reason? Is it because what is what catastrophic ideas do you keep coming coming up with? Hmm. Joe Robertson, you deleted your the message retracted. Don't be shy. Oh, I see you asked down there. All right, I'll get you. Sweet MS1. I've been doing a lot of meditation uh, and yoga nidra to calm. Yoga nidra is cool. Yeah, yeah, I like yoga nidra to calm the nervous system. That's really cool. But can you share how to build up physical tolerance if you can barely get off the couch? I can't even stretch my muscles. They are so shaky. All right. This is where mindset work really comes in because this is the problem I had. I would do the meditation all this when I was on the floor. And... Um, when I would get up, I would get full, you know, you know, the fatigue and all this. It's horrible, right? You're like blurry vision. But reality, you're thinking a lot of negative crap. When you get up, you're thinking, I'm never going to get better. I'm never going to get better. Oh, my God. I'm never going to get better. I'm never going to get better. I'm never going to get better. And you start thinking these negative thoughts, negative thoughts. And you want to, that's why the mindset work of like, I'm healing. I'm healing. Smiling, smiling, smiling. I'm healing. I'm healing. I'm going to get better. I'm getting stronger. I'm getting stronger. You want to be crazy. You want to be like, this is insane. All the evidence and the symptoms are saying I'm getting sicker, but I have to somehow make myself believe I'm getting better. Yeah. So I don't, so sweet MS1, the mindset, you're thinking negative things every time you get up. You're afraid of your symptoms. Don't be afraid of your symptoms. Get up, smile. Don't even think about your symptoms. Get up, 
shaky. Take use your cane, use your crutches, use your wheelchair, and just be smiling, be happy, live a good life, and keep doing those polyvagal exercises. Don't be afraid of your symptoms because what happens is that you become so fearful of your symptoms, you turn on the those negative thoughts and you turn turn on your nervous system and it makes you worse. Stop overthinking your symptoms. Number one, everybody text, oh my God, I got, I got these symptoms. They give me a list. Don't worry about your symptoms. That was a big way I got better. I gave up on all my, I didn't care about my symptoms anymore. I didn't care about getting better. I, I, I wanted to get better, but I stopped being so hyper vigilant of all my symptoms. I put away the blood pressure cuff. I put the SPO2. I bought a heart rate monitor that monitors me 24 seven. It's on a special app. I forgot what it's called. I, I had all the gadgets. Okay, to monitor all my stuff. I had an aura ring that I bought to track my. So I'm telling you, stop being so hypervigilant of your symptoms. You feel like crap? It's okay. Smile. Can you smile like feeling like crap? Can you have positive thoughts while feeling like crap? While doing the, you know, making sure you're committed to these polyvagal exercises. It's not just mental thoughts, but it's all together that works. 5008. I still have the, some of the muscle weakness and the vertigo, but it's not all bad like they used to be where me and. Uh, causing me to go to bed all day. I can go out and walk and walk dance too. Okay, great. That's what I have to do is stop drinking coffee. Yo, the coffee, brother. 5,008, no good. I wanted to, I'm to. i going to do that since you're advising it. Yeah, man, avoid the caffeine. So it's tough, man, because you're so used to the caffeine that when you stop drinking the coffee, you may get some symptoms worse because your nervous system's like, where's the caffeine? Where's the caffeine? And so, you know, it may make you worse, but I would stay away from caffeine. I remember I was very sensitive to it. If you're not so sensitive to it and you feel like it really doesn't matter, like bother you too much, I personally have nothing wrong with coffee. You know, it's whatever it is, what it is. But if you feel like you're all right, but just remember caffeine's a stimulant, right? So what do you think by like that? I mean, it's a stimulant that causes your, your nervous system to turn on, fight or flight. That's why if you look at you know, like sports gels, they have caffeine. So I give you that boost, that mental boost. Right now, you don't need no mental boost. You need to relax. But if you feel like your body's maybe used to it and you're okay, I wouldn't overthink it if you can get away from it. But if you get away with it and you really like have that addi strong addiction to coffee, it may make you worse at first. But again, if you're not afraid of your symptoms, sweet. Can you share what else you did to heal other than polyvagal? All right, guys, I'm going to give you the... The secret sauce of how to heal polyvagal. I'm not going to get into it, but I'm just going to say it all. I absolutely worked on my self-talk. I noticed I talked to myself like a prick. I also was very negative. Very negative. I worked on my self-talk. I stopped talking. I stopped abusing myself with my own self-talk. That's number one. That's a big pillar of it. Mindset. I worked on self-love. I never knew what self-love was. My parents never taught me that. And... I didn't know what it was to have self-love. Maybe like self-hatred almost, right? Because you're so abusive to yourself. Work on understanding and learning what is self-love. Read books on it. Read up, you know, watch YouTube videos on it. Childhood trauma. I worked on my childhood trauma. Why? Because childhood trauma ingrains beliefs in you. And these beliefs create make you sick. Very simple. If you're driven, type A personality, the belief you probably have is, the core belief is, I'm not worthy unless I'm overworking myself. I'm not worthy unless I'm suffering. Right? There's there's an iteration of this type of belief. Where does that belief come from? I mean, childhood. Childhood. That's trauma. Did your parents only give you attention when you accomplish things? And so that's why now you need to accomplish things to feel good. It actually makes you feel bad when you don't accomplish things. That's how I was. That's childhood trauma. I would dig into that. Think about why. Why do you have these beliefs? Challenge them. Are these beliefs real? Sorry, guys. My camera's like, I don't know what's going on with this garbage camera. What is going on? Sorry, guys. I don't know what. There we go. Sorry. So, yeah. And polyvagal exercises. So there's a work by Dr. Sarnos, also done. If you really want to learn something about mind-body, Dr. Sarnos has a book about lower back pain. Read that. It's a great book. Great book. 
because it pretty much says it's like your mind creates pain. And that's very true. So mindset, understanding what self-love is, that's part of mindset. Self-talk, change your self-talk. Stop being abusive to yourself. You know, and childhood trauma. How do you know you have childhood trauma? Look at the way you talk to yourself. Look at the beliefs, analyze and become aware of the beliefs that you have. Why are you so driven? Why do you want to go back to work so fast? Like if it's financial, I understand. But like, why do you feel like you have to accomplish more? Dig into that. Why? Why are you such a people pleaser? Why do you care what other people think about so much? Find out. Literally Google people pleaser on Google. Childhood trauma. Things will come up. Uh, it would take forever for me to explain these things. But I did a lot of that work. Uh, Joe Robertson, I've been fasting, have long COVID, and now understand why it makes me even worse. Yeah, man, fasting is going to make you worse, man. Uh, it puts your nervous system, it puts your body in a state of, you know, starvation. And it's it's stressful. So I would not fast when that this, this isn't a moment to fast. Uh, because remember, we're not working, we're working with your nervous system. We're not working with your cells and in your gut, and I understand there is a connection between gut and mental health, but we're not working with mental health. We're working with your nervous system. It's very, it gets a little weird though, because your nervous system affects your mental health. But we first, the root cause of the problem is, is nervous system, nervous system. It's too stressed out. Why? We want to relax that. Through your beliefs, through your thoughts, certain exercises we do can calm that nervous system down, communicate it. We can communicate to the nervous system, say, hey, buddy, calm down. You're safe. Doing things you enjoy, like bring you joy, singing music, church music, singing happy things. Like I like rock music, but I wouldn't, don't do rock. Like it will stimulate you. You don't want to be stimulated. Uh, Joe pa Robertson, how do you get out of that flight or fight response without medication? No need for medication. No need for medication. Uh, Pi Vigor size, the top three for me, laughing yoga, <laughs> laughing yoga, uh, yoga, and breathing exercises. Sorry about it, Joe. I spoke about it earlier, but those are the three. I have a Reddit post on my videos. I go in depth in that Reddit post on the description of my videos, and you'll be able to see what are the exercises I did. Uh, so yeah, meditation did not work for me, but for other people, meditation works, so... You have to try them all out. Try all the exercises. See which one you like and feels good for you. Get the top two or one or three that work for you and repeat those nonstop as much as you can. I had and others two made me worse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's like the, you're super, uh, Joe Roberts, that's like when you're really flexible, right? Like it's Dan, Dan Lowe's Ehlers syndrome. I've seen that. I didn't have that. I like try bending my... There's like a think test you can do at home, and I didn't have that. Joseph Jones. What's up, Joseph? Appreciate you being here, man, on your journey. When is the perfect time to start exercising? Sometimes I feel symptom-free, but it seems like the symptoms flare. Yes, Joseph. Beautiful, man. I'm so happy that you're mostly symptom-free. Do the polyvagal sandwich. That's what I call it. All right. I'm going to trademark it. So the polyvagal sandwich for exercising, to returning exercise, you want to sandwich those events that trigger you. So... Even if there's things that bring you joy, like I enjoy running, like I literally was like, oh, I liked running. Uh, doesn't mean that your nervous system probably still takes that something that's stressful. So let's say running is the thing that you're trying to do. Let's just say, or gym, whatever it is, but I'm just going to use running as an example. Before running, I would calm my nervous system through polyvagal exercise. In the middle of running, I would not listen to hardcore music. I would listen to Disney music because Disney music, there's scientific evidence that Disney music calms your nervous system down. Through the singing. It just can't be melody. It has to be a voice singing and melody in the background. Um, the, the founder of Polyvagal talks about this. While running, I would do that and I would smile. I would smile while running. And then after running, I'd get these really weird headaches. This is when I was fully healed. I would get symptoms when I would, well, again, I was still functional. It didn't, it didn't like relapse me for a week. No, I would just get weird, annoying symptoms. So afterwards, I would lay down on the grass. And I, or I would get home and lay down on the floor and I would do my breathing exercise to calm my nervous system down. And then my symptoms, I would be symptom free again. When I run, it would do, it would cause, cause it to do it again. So you do that sandwich again and again and again and again and again. And what you're doing is you're training your nervous system 
to say, hey, buddy, when I go running, it's safe. I'm safe, buddy. You don't have to be stressed out. I'm safe. And eventually, it doesn't trigger those symptoms anymore. And that takes time. The problem is that we, when we feel symptoms, we freak ourselves out. We become so afraid. We're like, no, no. We have all these thoughts, right? These negative thoughts of like, I'll never get better. Oh my God, I'm never better. Something's broken in me. The vagus nerve is destroyed. The, the vaccine, the COVID virus destroyed an organ. Oh my God. And then and it starts going down this negative pathway. Get away from that. When you have symptoms, just smile. Just be good. I'm good. Nothing's wrong. Nothing's broken. Uh, Max, nothing related to the discussion, but what's current percentage of people suffering from long COVID? I'm from India, and I think a lot of people have long COVID, but here, but they don't have awareness about long COVID. I think in the U.S., I heard that like it's from 10 to 30 percent of people with long COVID in the U.S. have long COVID. I don't know how true that is. If that's true, even if it's 10 percent, that's nuts. And there's people that never got COVID, but it got the vaccine and are now sick. I don't believe I just, I'm not. I just want to clarify something. I'm not God, okay? I don't I don't have the facts. I don't believe what I have is truth. I believe I have the best information for me, for what helped me heal and whatever. So I personally don't believe that the vaccine has anything that causes long COVID. Many people would disagree with me. I don't believe that because I was vaccinated three times. I had long COVID horribly and I healed myself through polyvagal. And it was just crazy. Nothing else worked. I've tried so many things. My God, I just tried so many things and nothing got me progressively better. And I was like, man, so it's not this. So that's the best thing I can. So again, so if it's, if people are getting sick from the vaccine, I think it's your fear of the vaccine that gets people sick. I think it's that type A personality, that trauma, past trauma, and then getting sick or getting the vaccine or that event that throws your nervous system into this chronic uh, fight or flight. So yeah, that's what I believe. I could be wrong. I just want to, I can be absolutely wrong of all about this. So again, I'm not the, I'm not the, the man, right? So I could be wrong because by my current life experiences, that's what I believe. Just want to clarify that. And I'm okay disagreeing with everybody. I'm, I'm not going to hate you because I disagree with you. We can have two different opinions and we're cool. Me and you, we're cool. So I just want to clarify that. I have no hatred towards anybody. Joe Robertson, ever since COVID has stressed, been stressed 24-7, also don't know why either. Yeah. So the thing about uh, uh, the nervous system is that if your nervous system is activated, it can it can give you, it can affect your mental health by giving you extreme anxiety. And it's not your fault. The hormones that cause extreme anxiety or the hormones that cause happy feeling of happiness are not being released. Because your nervous system is activated. So just know if you're extremely stressed and anxious, not only do you need to work on that self-talk and those positive thoughts, but just know that your nervous system is causing you those mental health problems. It's causing your anxiety. It's causing your depression. So don't see it as like, oh, it's my mental health, my depression. No, no. Like once you start fixing your nervous system, you'll start, start coming out of that depression. You'll slowly start coming out of that that constant anxiety and panic attack. Max, low frequency music is also very helpful. Yeah, I've heard about that. There's like, and there's different frequencies. Um, like Disney has like a, you know, Disney has one where it makes kids feel, Disney music is supposed to make kids feel joyful and safe. And they have a special frequency with the melody, which is like, I don't, you know, the music, background music with the voice of the singers. It makes them feel happy, the kids. And so that's why they say it works for people that are, have this nervous system that's stressed out. And it's true. Listen to Disney music. Like you're like, you're like a little kid. Let yourself be kid again. You don't have to be, you know, so stressed out. 5,008 today I got up, had a little bit of muscle weakness vertical. It's when I move my head downwards, upwards to fast. When I go out and get sunshine, go for walks, I don't feel the symptoms at all. It's so weird, man. You know, when I started feeling news, I knew this polyvagal, like little things just click. When I was around friends, my symptoms would disappear. Me and my friends would be in the backyard. We have a little barbecue. And, you know, I were like, wow, you know, I'm having a good time. I'm like, and I'm like, yo, my symptoms are, I have no symptoms. And when they would disappear, my symptoms would come full blast. I'm like, what's wrong with me? What is, I'm like, what's going on here? And again, that social engagement, right? Or sharing things of your nervous system feeling relaxed. And that's where, for me, it just reiterated that that was it. Polyvagal. 
This only happens to me when I'm in my apartment. It comes from Christianity, the belief of not being worthy. This is my meditation, so important for long COVID patient. Gives you the power and wealth for yourself to heal. Absolutely. I think, you know, uh, certain religions or certain beliefs our parents gave us. Uh, I am Christian. I guess I am what some people would consider religious. Um, I do have faith, I guess. Uh, but there are certain beliefs uh, that I guess we grew up with. I guess could be based on that. Uh, and they, uh, yeah, they make you feel not worthy. They make you feel shamed. And those are things we have to challenge and confront. And again, the most beautiful question I ask myself is it, is, is it true? And a lot of these beliefs that we have are not. So why do we continue believing in them? And you got to work on letting it go. Max, Dr. Ariel Schwartz Yoga Channel is also very good for anyone who's looking for polyvagal related yoga. So great. Uh, Max says, Dr. Ariel Schwartz. I don't know who that is, but Yoga Channel can help you out. I think that's great. Because there is no judgment meditation, it's just your breath. I'm going for a walk. Enjoy 5008. Enjoy, man. Can you talk about the physical symptom and how that melted away? So Zeus. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Physical symptoms. Man, I'm be honest with you. I don't know when it went away. I don't know the timeline. I just know the brain fog started leaving after three days. And I think after two weeks, I just felt so much better. I was able to walk around again. I was able to go shopping. Um, and your recovery doesn't look like this. Or... Your recovery looks like this. And you have to stop stressing about your symptoms. So Zeus, I could tell you, you're really zoned in on your symptoms. That's okay. I get it. But um, I would really focus on trying to let go on trying to get better. I know that makes no sense. Don't be hypervigilant about your symptoms. And that's hard for me to tell you because if I was telling me that before I got better, I'd have punched me in the face. So I get it. Trust the process. Um, your symptoms slowly start going to start getting better and better and better. And uh, nothing like it. And it's, just, it's not just me, Zeus. There's other people. So, yeah, they just start going away. I don't really know. I'll be honest with you. The physical symptoms are like, I don't remember that. You know what I remember? How excited I got. I remember being ecstatic because my symptoms left. And I just like, I was like, oh my God, I'm getting my life back. So that's it. So that's what I remember. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your question that great. All right, guys, I think that's it. It's an hour and 12 minutes. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I appreciate you guys. Um, I might do another live maybe next week, maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm trying to work. I'm working on another video about perfectionism. Uh, so I want to do that. I feel like it could help a lot of people. Um, uh, sweet MS, you could look at my Reddit. I have specific POV exercises. I will do a video one day about these POV exercises. But if you long uh, laughing yoga, breathing exercise, do those. Sweet. Sweets, do those. Don't worry about doing a million. Get one, two, or three that you love. Repeat them. Thank you, Ali. My man, appreciate you, man. Yeah. I prayed a lot. If praying works for you, 5008, do it. There is no test, Max, that long COVID is, is uh, healable. Only thing I would do that is uh, watch Raylan's channel. Watch people who've healed. Uh, build that hope by watching others who've healed. Listen to their stories. Listen to how you relate to them. Listen to how bad their symptoms were. And you're like, man, I'm going through that too. Like, wow, he healed? So there is no test. No, there is not even a test for long COVID. There's no test for chronic fatigue syndrome or dysautonomia, except for POTS. So yeah. Ali, perfectionism is a problem for me. Absolutely, perfectionism is. That's my next video. Uh, being a perfectionist, I'll 
I'm working on the video. It's going to, it's going to be a good one. Uh, when you're in an asking position of your energy, the energy becomes desperate energy is be well, and you will be in your own will. Yep. Sweet. You're welcome. Zeus. God bless you, my man. Max. Thanks a lot. Yeah. You're welcome, brother. Appreciate you guys. Be safe today. Enjoy your Sunday. Smile, 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 smile. You live a good life. You live a good life. Let me repeat this. You live an amazing life. I don't care how bad your symptoms are. You talking bad about your symptoms, it's not helping you. So let go of that. All right. Let go of all these expectations of yourself and your family, of everybody else. Just let go. Take a deep breath. Smile. You live a good life. Keep saying that to yourself. And I'll see you guys in the next week. And uh, my wife says she's going to try to put the live up and hopefully you guys can rewatch it. All right. Take care. God bless. Peace out, guys.